The war in Ukraine has brought unthinkable terror and destruction. Countless buildings have been bombed, but this one stood out to me. How this tower remained standing after suffering such damage defied belief. This example had extensive imagery allowing me to accurately model the tower and determine how much structure was destroyed. This video illustrates what I learned. And this attack is not all it appears to be and involves one of the more confounding facets of war, which I will explain. The building is in the capital, Kiev, just five kilometers from the city center. It is part of a cluster of post-Soviet apartment blocks built in the last 15 years. The tower is 26 stories, with retail on the lower levels. On a Saturday morning, just three days into this war, a missile came tearing through this residential area. The impact was captured from two angles. The missile struck the south corner on the 21st floor. It came very close to missing the building completely. Had it missed, it would have struck the hospital or apartments across the road. Such is the random luck in war. Debris lay strewn on the ground. The courageous rescuers rushed into the building even though it was at risk of collapse. Thankfully, no fatalities were reported because residents had been hiding in shelters. It is bizarre to think that Soviet bomb shelters protected Ukrainians from Russian invaders. Let's understand the makeup of the building. The structure is reinforced concrete. The three large box elements are stair and elevator shafts. They are the stiff concrete elements essential for stabilizing the structure against sideways sway. The building columns are concrete and so are the floors. The walls are masonry with insulation. They do not contribute structural strength. The explosion blew open a huge hole, causing severe structural damage. The walls on the back were blown out as well from the blast force traveling right through inside the apartment. This excellent close-up footage was useful in accurately modeling the damage. The link to this video is in the description. The scene is confusing, and it is difficult to understand how much concrete support had been destroyed. Let's go through each element of damaged structure. Masonry walls were blown out across six floors and crashed onto roofs below. The corner column received a direct hit. The blast pulverized four levels of column and slabs. A 12 meter section of column was destroyed. The next closest column to the blast was also gone. The adjacent slab and column below were bent and cracked. These two columns fractured and were distorted and twisted out of shape by the blast. Even though they did not drop, they were damaged to such an extent that they no longer provided structural support. Side by side, you can compare the model with reality. It is incredible that the structure had lost four of its main vertical support columns and survived. The extent of the devastation is clearly visible in this 360 imagery. The link is in the description. This is the extent of damaged concrete. Looking up, it is clear to see just how much structure was unsupported. The corner of the building was literally hanging off the adjacent structure. 
the load from the four red columns was redirected into the adjacent columns shown in blue. Because the structure had been oversized with a safety factor, they could carry the additional weight. Engineers beef up structures to survive even if multiple elements may be lost. It is called redundancy. The structure had more columns than is typical, which also made it stronger and helped it survive. Cars dictate a column arrangement that is rigid and inflexible. The three car arrangement is the most efficient and most common, but the result is a rather wide span of seven and a half meters or more. This building did not accommodate vehicles and so it was able to have these extra columns and shorter floor spans. This made the tower more robust and resilient against damage. The hanging portion was small relative to the undamaged part of the floor plate. This meant there was a large, solid and stable stronghold for the dangling portion to hang from. But there is an unpleasant side to this story and one which is unavoidable in war. Russia did not fire this missile. In the first days of the war, Russia was flying warplanes over Kiev. This missile was fired to shoot down one of these enemy aircraft, but it malfunctioned and hit the building in error. This was friendly fire, and at least nobody died from the mistake. Anti-aircraft missiles have smaller warheads. Had this been a cruise missile, a much more powerful blast would have brought the building down. This attack has left hundreds homeless. The apartment owners have set about trying to repair their building, and engineers think this might be feasible. Assuming this is possible, this is how the repair process might be done. The structure must get temporary propping. The concrete frame above the blast sagged and distorted. All cracked and dislodged masonry would be removed. Weakened concrete would be cut away. The missing concrete columns and floors would then be rebuilt. A small gap would be left at the top of the new columns. Lifting jacks would raise the structure back to its original level. And finally, the building is stable again with all support columns reinstated. A repair would be much faster and less expensive than rebuilding the tower, but it is a hazardous undertaking. The takeaway from this story is that engineers design buildings that are stronger than we may expect. It is very reassuring to see structural safety factors working like they should in a real world situation. This means we can occupy buildings with high confidence. Building collapses are exceedingly rare. One exception was the condo that collapsed in Surfside, Florida last year. Click to watch my videos, which illustrate and explain this tragic collapse. If you found this video useful, please tap the like button so it will be suggested to more viewers like you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.